Yeah. Uh, I've only got a few. <laughs> I only got a few slides tonight, so it would be kind of quick. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah so, so tonight's agenda, we've got... Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a workshop that Oliver and I gave. Oh, sorry, are you good there, Oliver? Right? Yeah, I'm very good. Um, Ollie and I gave a workshop on Monday evening to the Pi ladies, uh, who are a group in Melbourne. We'll talk about this up. Um, introducing my class and stuff. That went really well, so I'd like to share that. Um, we also went to the, I also went to the PyCom event, there's a few others that, that went as well, um, which was on Monday, it was a whole day, sort of on, most of the day sort of event. Um, we'll cover that briefly. A little bit of news and then Damien's going to talk about some or all of those topics, yeah, we're not okay. sure yet, so it's a, it's a bit of a surprise. Lots of okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you want to talk about those or is there something yeah, else that's true? Anyway, it's a, always fun. So the PyLays workshop, this came about uh, after PyCon AU. Um, uh, we'd sort of reached out and uh, attached, or, or at least associated with some of the, the, the parties uh, who had been uh, attending there, uh, and there was some interest in, in getting some microbiome and training or workshop. Um, it also kind of coincided with something I'd wanted to do, which was uh, a beginner's kit for microbiome. Um, it's always been a bit of a frustration that, you know, sometimes we have beginners come along here and it's not a great experience because we're sort of we're all busy doing our own things and we can't give them something to just go away and work on. So the concept of the starter kit was born, um, which we wanted to make it really cheap. Um, if someone was coming in the meetup, we could just hand this to them and they can work through some documentation that we've got, which um, is all based around, at the moment, just an ESP32 uh, and, and shields. So no soldering, no breadboarding, no wires. Um, some pretty clear, almost overly verbose documentation on how to get moving and, and some exercises for each of the shields. Um, and so we took that and applied it to the Pi Ladies workshop. So we had, uh, we capped that at 10, but we had 12 there. Uh, we had to scramble some hardware. Um, and it seemed to go really well. Uh, it was the first time we went through the workshop material that we put together. So we've got all that on a, on a read the docs page. You can go have a look at that later. Um, and we weren't really sure if it was sort of at the right um, sort of level and, and, and whatnot, but um, yeah, I think it went really well. Uh, everyone seemed to be enjoying themselves. Uh, they were making lights appear within five minutes of starting to play with it. Right. They had like, there's a buzzer shield and they were making, you know, the, um, what was the first one? The uh, Mario tune. So Mario tunes beeping away and all this kind of stuff. And it was, it was really fun and interactive. It was, it was good. Um, so I think it was kind of a success and I'd like to, um, Keep going with that. I want to put together a few more kits so that if people do walk in here, we can give them those and they can purchase them at the end of the, of the if they want to take them home. Hi. Do you have all those kits now? I don't. We've sort of got rid of them all, but you can use this one. Um, we'll sort you out. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's the last one we've got. <laughs> yeah, <I'll do> <laughs> um, and we also had a bunch of other shields. Maybe I'll just put that behind the shield. Thank you. So some of those shields included, like, so it comes with the. If you could hold that up, please, Todd. It comes with, uh, what's it, seven, <laughs> seven leads, like in a little circular pattern. Um, so they had a lot of fun making you know, the lights light up and spin around. And um, Brown actually got one, got the electronic dice working, which was uh, using this in conjunction with the buzzer shield. So it would spin around like a dice, slow down, and as it's spinning, like the buzzer's ticking in time. <laughs> and it would change colour at the end when it finished, uh, which was kind of a cool little project. It wouldn't have been annoying at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we have, you know, Lead Matrix um, was also popular, so you can scroll text on it. Um, the buzzer, as I said, is very popular. The button wasn't as popular as we thought, but you can still you can do things with it. Um, you have the PIR sensor, which um, one, of the, one of the girls took home because she wants to make it like a Halloween scare thing with it. So when someone comes near a mirror, it's... You know, trying to freak them out a little bit. Uh, and there was also the OLED display. So there's a tiny little OLED that you can get as a shield as well. Um, they had a lot of fun just drawing patterns on that, spirals and, and whatnot. Um, so they've already tried to book us in for another session in January. Um, we'll see how we go. But, um, how long did you go for? Went for? It was normally for three hours. It was starting to wrap up after about two and a half, I guess. Yeah. Um, Pretty good results. But it was, it was really fun. Um, our... Uh, yeah, I'd like to encourage other people to go have a look at the, the um, documentation we've put together because if you can find ways to improve it, 
Um, we've already got a whole bunch of issues on the, on the GitHub there. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it's kind of good now. I'm sort of satisfied I can give something like that to, to a Todd and uh, have him work through it. Um, so, uh, oh, there's a photo of Ollie looking like a very stern teacher, but uh, <laughs> people are actually enjoying themselves there. It's hard to show on a stage. <laughs> that was good. Was really good. And they were told to enjoy themselves or else. <laughs> <laughs> you will enjoy yourself. You're looking so menacing too there. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Um, a bit more space to work out there. It was at ThoughtWorks. Uh, yeah, mm. it, was, it was a good spot for it. Yeah, it was I'm, I'm like the crowd venue as well. It's terrible. Yeah. yeah. There's but a few things we've learned. Like, um, we ended up using uh, the new editor. Uh, that was a real win for beginners. Um, just much faster to get going. We looked at using R shell and MPF shell and a whole bunch of other things, but new was just way easier. Um, Which one did you use, sir? New. New. Oh, yeah. With, with the H66. Right? Yeah, so you need the alpha version of it because um, it's got the ESP um, support. But it's great because it automatically detects the devices there. You've got a REPL instantly. So um, it just got rid of a whole slew of problems right. about trying to get them on board. Um, getting started is probably the, f the first and biggest problem. Uh, you're making sure you've got the right cables, like a bunch of the computers these days. I mean, the kit comes with USB A, but you know, a lot of these people had Macs. So you had to have USB C, things like that we sort of had to work through. Um, uh, getting the shields oriented the right way, uh, we need to spend a bit more time on that because there's a couple of shields damaged. Um, which, uh, especially with the board that we're using, so we set it on using the um, the Wemos shields, which is the it was built around the ESP8266. Um, thankfully, there's a company that has ESP32 boards which have the same pattern, but it's a superset, so you've actually got an extra couple of pins at the top, so that confuses people a little bit. Um, so we just need to make that a little bit clearer, I think, in the kicking goals. Yeah, I mean, that also confused me while I'm trying to write the yeah, documentation, absolutely. but it's an easy mistake to make. Yeah, especially uh, three people like, how does this go? Mm. Yeah, it was, it was really good. Uh, so the PyCon Go Event, Go Invent workshop, um, it was kind of like a sales pitchy thing, but uh, the cost of admission, which was about, it was a bit under 90 bucks, um, also came with uh, a fire pie, um, which is kind of a neat little bit of hardware anyway. Um, so this is on the same day actually. So I went from attending a workshop to giving one. It was a long, long day. Uh, and I guess the take home for me was that the, the hardware is really, really quite nice. There's, there's, they stuff a whole bunch of radios in this thing, and it's pretty impressive little electronics. But like we spent ages getting the demos running. Like it was really slow paced. Um, wasn't really well organized, I would say. Um, I couldn't get my VS plugin working that they wanted us to all use, um, and I wasn't alone. Uh, they do have some interesting ideas, like the whole PyBytes thing. This is a, like it's an online service that hooks into Amazon and um, whichever other services. It's quite a neat idea. Uh, it's, Badly it's still not there yet, yeah. I'd say, yeah. uh, but it does show promise. I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, the biggest problem is that they've they've gone to a, um, a GPL license for their MicroPython implementation, so. Um, I can't write any code for PyCom, so uh, I think if you wanted to use this as a solution, yeah, by all means, it's got some promise. Um, but for me, as a MicroPython developer, um, yeah, it's it's a harder sell. Um, and we fed this back, and we want to spend a bit of time talking with the folks there at the end of the day. Uh, we it's politely, it politely fed it back. Sorry, no? we politely fed it back. We politely but firmly get her. And what they say though? What they say? They've made their decisions. They're trying to push forward and oh, yeah. they've, they've got a business they want to run and they're trying to make decisions around that business. Which so they're not contributing anything back now? No, they're not. Mm. No. And they, yeah, they, they did claim that they had, which was true in the past, that they have, but they can't now because of the license change. Um, they feel they're also trying to promote MicroPython, which they did on the day, to be fair. Um, so they are advertising that they are doing that to it. But the fact that no contributions can come back is a, is a pretty big stumbling block for me. Anyway, I encourage you to go have a look at the hardware. It is quite interesting, so it's worth having a look. Um, and yeah, we can take the hardware and run our own variant of MicroPython. Well, you can certainly run MicroPython on hardware, yeah. yeah. Um, we just need some radio support, really, and driver yeah. support. That's right. Okay. Anyway, um, Adafruit had a few things come out, and I think this was more closer to last month, but they've got uh, uh, an STM32 feather, um, which I think. I'll put the, the pull request in, so that's supported now on MicroPython. 
Um, they'll have circuit Python on that soon enough, I presume. Uh, and also of interest is the uh, NRF 52840, uh, which will run both CircuitPython and MicroPython. Um, apparently it's getting gotten pretty close to being released. And that's in the itsy bitsy form factor, which is about that big. It's kind of, kind of nice. Um, yeah, it's, it's a nice little chipset. That's kind of cool. Uh, Thea Flowers had an interesting post, quite a detailed blog post on, uh, she built a board to use for CircuitPython, and there's a whole bunch of things that she learned about it. All of them are relevant for anyone who's doing MicroPython boards as well. Um, she sort of talked about prototyping and uh, working with some of the, the, um, the people who can make this stuff. So you to read if you're interested in that stuff. Uh, and just today, uh, hot off the press, uh, Jean Christophe's web server for MicroPython had an, an update. So this micro web server, I don't know how you say it, I guess it's just serve. Micro web server, um, it was quite a, quite a useful um, library and, and web server in its own right. Now he's released version two, which also has all sorts of useful features. I don't know if all of us got a demo ready yet. <laughs> Maybe by the end of the night, we'll see, we'll see how we get. Um, is it built to yeah, actually the derivation of the Python web server? So, no, it's developed for MicroPython. Um, so, but he's taken, his, he's taken what he's learned from the old one and only reused a little bit by the look of it. It looks quite new and fresh. Um, What's great about it, it's really well documented, um, and it's good. it looks like it's got some pretty good features. So, um, I, like I mean, the last one I found super useful and super yeah. quick to get up and running. So if there's only improved in that, it can only be good things. Yeah, that's pretty good. <coughs> and full server implementation and stuff? What are those limitations? Uh, I don't know yet. Out today. <laughs> he's got on the blog on his forum post. He's got all the details of all the stuff that supports. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'll share this with you and um, click through the link. It's there's a bunch of stuff that yeah. looks like it supports. Uh, it, it, I suspect he's actually using the thread library as well, though. So at the moment, I'm not sure if it's just ESP32 and STM32. I imagine so. Um, yeah, Jim's querying on that. Yeah, I'm sure it's good. Uh, moving on, I just thought to put this out there because Seed Studio, like they're coming out with like lots of announcements on Risk Five, uh, and these two are kind of interesting. They're, they're at the low end for MicroPython, 128k and the Flash and 32k of RAM, but they're also cheap. They're like you know, five dollars and seven dollars, and this one's got Wi-Fi. Um, but yeah, it just seemed like interesting that they're doubling down on Risk Five. They've got some other more powerful stuff built around the the K210 as well, which is that the one that Cypy makes uses. Um, but yeah, it's like four dollars ninety for a little Risk Five with with a display on it. It's pretty amazing. Um, I just thought it was an interesting trend in the industry. Uh, and there was a port of one of the Circuit Python libraries to support the RA eight seven five, which uh, is a graphics driver for TFTs. Um, but it's pretty nice because it's eight hundred by four eighty is, is what it supports. It's a useful size for for an LCD or a TFT. Um, it's one of those forty pin. Jobs. Uh, I also stumbled across this um, quite a neat blog post on how to use the ESP32 CAM, um, which is a cheap, I think it's an under $10 board with an ESP32 and a, and a OV2640 yeah. uh, camera. Uh, and this blog post talks about what you've got to do to build the appropriate drivers to get all that working. Um, and on that side, there's actually quite a few MicroPython posts, so take a look there if you're interested. If you think there's a uh, and this the last slide I had was um, about the, there was a guy, Zoltan, um, wrote a whole bunch of really useful um, documentation around building C modules in MicroPython for MicroPython. Um, goes into quite a lot of detail about um, how to interact with iterables, how to pass parameters through from the MicroPython side through to C. Um, it's actually really good documentation. I've um, referred to it a few times then. So if you're in that space, take a look. It's, uh, he's also been sort of approached as you know, could this become official documentation? It seems open to it, so um, yeah, that's really good. That's all I got for it. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you.